Hello lovelies! If you are looking for a healthier way to satisfy your sweet tooth, then today you have come to the right place because I have three delicious dessert ideas that are honestly nutritious enough you could actually eat them for breakfast. I know that sounds hard to believe, but stay with me. We're getting started today with this unbelievably yummy maple apple crisp, and you're not gonna believe how easy it is to put together. Now, of course, it all starts with some apples. Traditionally, when you're making an apple dessert, you would peel your apples first, but you might not know that the skins are loaded with great fiber, so I am leaving them on in this case. It also happens to make this process just a whole lot easier. You'll notice I'm also dicing my apples up into relatively small pieces. This is just going to help everything cook up a little more quickly. Once my apples are all chopped, I'm going to transfer them into a large bowl, and then I'm going to get some flavor happening in here. So to do that, I am going to add a nice drizzle of maple syrup. You could use some honey or agave in this recipe instead, but maple syrup and apple just were meant to be together. Trust me on this one. Next, I'm going to add a good sprinkle of cinnamon to this, as well as just a touch of ground nutmeg. To help our apple mixture get nice and thick and syrupy during the cooking process, I'm also going to be adding a couple tablespoons of cornstarch to this. If you don't want to use cornstarch here, you could use some arrowroot flour instead. That is a great substitute. I'm also going to be adding some lemon juice to this for a bit of moisture and some tang. I'll just use a spoon to mix this all up until my apples are properly coated, and then I'm going to transfer these into a cast iron skillet. Now, if you wanna do this in a plain baking dish instead, you definitely can. Just make sure whatever you're using is oven safe. Next, we're going to turn our attention to our amazing topping for this apple dessert. It all starts with some old-fashioned rolled oats in my bowl. To that, I'm going to be adding some chopped pecans. You could really use any sort of nut in this recipe, but pecans, I feel like, are just a perfect match for my apples. In addition to my pecans, I'm also going to be adding a good sprinkle of almond flour to this, which is going to help bind everything together. Then I'm going to add a little bit of melted coconut oil to this and finish it off with some maple syrup for just a touch more sweetness. I'll stir this all up until everything is well combined, and then I'm just going to pour it on top of my apple mixture. Super easy, right? I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm going to get this entire dish right into the oven for between 35 and 45 minutes or so. When this beauty comes out of the oven, your apples are going to be soft and syrupy and delicious, and that topping is going to be so unbelievably crisp. Now, if you wanna keep this more dessert, you can of course serve it up with some vanilla flavored ice cream, but if you wanna enjoy this for breakfast, go ahead and use some vanilla flavored Greek yogurt instead. Honestly guys, there is really no bad way to enjoy this. It is super yummy. Next, for another equally delicious but equally nutritious dessert idea, I am sharing my amazing vanilla raspberry chia pudding. Again, this definitely could be served for breakfast if you felt so inclined. Now, I'm gonna be mixing everything up in my food processor for this recipe, but you could do this in your blender. It's food processors in my house are very uncooperative. <laughs> I'm gonna be mixing up everything in my food processor in this recipe, but you definitely could use a blender instead if you wanted to. We're going to start by adding some raspberries to the bowl of our food processor. Now, I've opted for fresh raspberries in this recipe, but if you wanna go ahead and use frozen, both will definitely work here, and frozen can be a bit more affordable. To that, I'm going to add some milk. Now, I'm using some almond milk here, but really any milk will do. Dairy milk will be fine. Hemp, soy, whatever makes you happy. To that, I'm going to be adding a little bit of honey for some sweetness, as well as a nice splash of vanilla extract for that great vanilla flavor. Then I'll just pop the lid on my food processor and let this blend up for between 30 seconds and a minute. That's really all it takes to get this awesome, lovely pink raspberry puree. I'm just going to transfer my raspberry mixture into a container, and then I'm just going to be adding my chia seeds to this. In this recipe, I'm using white chia seeds, but black chia seeds would definitely work just as well. Depends on what you have on hand. Then I'll just give this a good stir, pop the lid on, and get it in the refrigerator to set. Now the thing with chia pudding is that the longer it sets, the better the texture becomes. So if you have a few hours, go ahead and let it set for a few hours. But if you can let it set overnight, it's even better. As soon as it's set, I like to transfer it into some pretty serving dishes and top it with a handful of fresh raspberries and a little bit of fresh mint. Now this dessert is perfectly pretty in pink and would actually be an amazing idea for Valentine's Day. 
Finally, lovelies, we are whipping up some amazing chocolate almond oat bars. You're not going to believe how tasty they are and how easy they are to put together. Now, of course, because they're oat bars, I'm sure you're not going to be surprised to hear that they all start with some oats, some old fashioned rolled oats to be exact. To my oats, I am going to be adding some shredded coconut. Now, I'm using unsweetened shredded coconut. That's really important because the sweetened kind can actually be a little too sweet for my taste at least. Next, I'm going to add a little almond flour to this, which is going to help these bind together as well as a good helping of salt. I'll mix all my dry ingredients up to get them well combined, and then it's time to get my wet ingredients into the bowl. First up, I've got some almond butter headed in here. If you wanted to swap in peanut butter instead, definitely you can do that, it's up to you. Next, I've got some honey headed in here for sweetness, and I'll finish this off with another good splash of vanilla extract. I'll mix this up until it's created a nice dough, and then it's time to just transfer it into a baking dish. Now, to make these very easy to remove from the baking dish, I have lined it with some parchment paper. This is just gonna make your lives so much easier, so don't skip this step. You wanna make sure that you're spreading this mixture into a nice thin layer along the bottom of your baking dish. At this point, I will get it into the oven at 350 degrees for between 25 and 30 minutes. That's really all it takes to get it completely set. Then I'll take it out of the oven and allow it to cool a little bit while I get to work on my chocolate topping. I'm going to get started by melting some chocolate in a double boiler. Now I am using some vegan chocolate chips here and a little bit of coconut oil. I'll cook that up, stirring it constantly until it's nice and smooth and melted. And then I'm just going to pour my chocolate mixture on top of my oat bars. I'll use my spatula to spread that chocolate out into an even layer. And the final step is optional, but always delicious. I'm going to be adding some chopped almonds to the top of this. My almonds happen to be roasted and salted, which make them extra good here. Seriously guys, I would not lead you astray, as you all know. We'll get these into the refrigerator for between say 15 and 20 minutes or until that chocolate is completely set. And then you can just cut them into squares and enjoy them at your leisure. I'll just say it, this would be amazing with your morning coffee. Guys, I hope you'll give all three of these delicious desserts a try, and if you do, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Facebook me a photo, because as always, you know I love seeing your kitchen creations. Remember, all three of these yummy recipes are being featured on healthymealplans.com. If you're not familiar, it's our awesome meal planning site. You can browse lots of recipes, build your meal plan for the week, create your grocery list. So super convenient, I hope you will check it out. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, because there is lots more deliciousness where this came from.